Hi, I'm Sanjay Mukhopadhyay, and today we are going to learn about the Pax-8 immunohistochemical marker. Pax-8 stands for paired box protein 8, and if you want to do some interesting reading, it's very interesting to read about the homeobox uh, genes and how they're uh, useful uh, or how they're um, instrumental in development of various organ systems in the body. The uh, proteins that result from the homeobox genes are all transcription factors and therefore all um, of the resultant immunohistochemical markers are nuclear markers. And same is true for Paxate. Paxate is a nuclear marker. It should look like this. So here all the tumor cells are positive but positive only in the nuclei. The cytoplasm is negative. Paxate stains greater than 90% of clear cell renal cell carcinomas. It also stains other kinds of renal cell carcinomas like uh, papillary and chromophobe and so forth. But I'm taking a clear cell uh, renal cell carcinoma as an example here because that's the prototype and the vast majority of cases are positive for Paxate. Here is an example. So at the top right you see a clear cell renal cell carcinoma and at the bottom, you see strong and diffuse Paxate staining in the nuclei of the tumor cells. This is a wonderful marker for renal cell carcinoma and has replaced um, old and I think now obsolete markers such as a renal cell carcinoma marker. Fourth, Paxate stains the vast majority of non-mucinous GYN carcinomas or carcinomas of the gynecologic tract. And by this, I mean that uh, except for ovarian mucinous adenocarcinomas, where Paxate staining is relatively low, the other uh, common uh, carcinomas of the gynecologic tract, so serous carcinomas of all kinds and endometrioid carcinomas, are positive for Paxate in the vast majority of cases. Here's an example of, it, of an endometrial cancer that metastasized to the lungs producing multiple nodules, many of them cavitary, bilateral nodules in the lung. This was actually after a long disease-free interval. On the right side, you see the endometrial adenocarcinoma with a cribriform pattern and some squamous differentiation. And here's the Paxate stain showing strong and diffuse nuclear positivity in the metastatic tumor cells. Our fifth fact is that Paxate is positive in thyroid carcinomas. The Percentage is relatively high in papillary thyroid carcinoma and follicular carcinoma. And it's controversial what the percentage is in anaplastic carcinomas, but uh, it's clear that at least some um, anaplastic carcinomas can be positive for Paxate, making this a helpful marker for their identification. And this point is very important from my point of view because I'm a lung pathologist. Strong and diffuse Paxate staining does not occur in primary lung carcinoma of any type. I'll repeat that. Strong and diffuse Paxate staining does not occur in any primary lung carcinoma of any type. In fact, the vast majority of adenocarcinomas of the lung, for example, stain like this. They just do not stain for Paxate. They're completely dead negative. There is uh, an occasional case in the literature that's been reported to be Paxate positive and usually the reported staining is focal and weak. Um, strong and diffuse Paxate staining has never been reported in lung cancer. How do we know that? We actually did a study where none of our cases, there was a large series um, of primary lung carcinomas that we did. The first author was Kelsey McHugh, one of our residents, and this was published in 2017. We did a, a big series of primary lung carcinomas where there was uh, no strong and diffuse staining in any case. But we also looked at the literature, and in the literature, there are now 1,694 cases, or at least last by last year, there were um, that were evaluated for Pax8 expression in various papers. So we reviewed all of them, and we said in our paper, it is striking that none of these studies, none, report or illustrate even a single case of strong and diffuse Pax8 positivity. In primary lung carcinoma. In other words, there were no cases out of those 1,694 
of primary lung carcinoma. There were no cases with strong and diffuse backside positivity. So this is very helpful information for a lung pathologist to know. And finally, I'll leave you with a note about normal tissues. So Paxate can stain some normal tissues, and as you would expect, those are the same tissues uh, that correspond to the cancers that are Paxate positive. So Paxate stains renal tubules, both proximal and distal. It stains thyroid follicular cells. It stains endometrial cells and B lymphocytes. I'll show you a couple of examples. Here you can see Paxate staining in renal tubular epithelial cells. So the tubular epithelial cells stain, but glomeruli do not. And Paxate is positive in B cells. Here you see a lymphoid follicle with B cells positive for Paxate. T cells do not stain. Um, one thing about B cell staining is that when there's inflammation, there's always a couple of B cells around. And those cells provide a nice internal control that let you know that your Paxate stain is working. So those are our seven must-know facts for Paxate. Hope you enjoyed this presentation.